Hi guys, my name's Chloe, I'm one of the exercise physiologists with the BREATHE programme and today I'm going to be talking to you about exercise and a chronic respiratory disease. So that's ways to get active if you've got anything such as COPD, asthma, interstitial lung disease, pulmonary fibrosis or anything else that comes under a chronic respiratory disease. So to start, I'm going to talk to you first about a magic pill. Now if you imagine tomorrow the NHS is going to bring out this new magic pill uh, with benefits such as improvements in your chronic respiratory disease symptoms, reduced breathlessness which causes improvements in your quality of life, a reduction in the amount of chest infections and exacerbations you're getting with your symptoms, on top of that a reduction in blood pressure, weight loss, reduced risk of heart disease, reduced anxiety and depression, generally stronger muscles and improvements in your walking speed. You'd take it wouldn't you? And in addition to that there's no side effects to this magic pill. So you imagine that's coming out tomorrow and have a little think would you take that? Because I certainly would with all those benefits and none of the side effects. Well bad news guys because that magic pill is exercise. However, as previously spoken about in that last slide, there are a lot of benefits that exercise can give you that do parallel in the medications that you are taking, which is why we call it this magic pill. And on top of that, there are no side effects to exercise, albeit you might feel breathlessness, you might feel tired after you do a bout of walking, going to the shops, doing your gardening. You know, you'll feel it after that, but in the long term, it will make you fitter, it will make you stronger, and it will overall reduce how breathless you are when you're doing these activities. So that's why we call it a magic pill, okay? Okay, so we understand the benefits of exercise, certainly, but at the end of the day, it's your breathlessness that's stopping you from being physically active. And it's the fear of getting out of breath that is putting you off doing those exercises uh, and that activity. Whether it's going out for a walk with friends on your own, going to a food shop, maybe doing little bits in the garden or housework, or maybe it is doing an activity that you love doing before, if it is going to the gym or going swimming. However, being active can improve your breathing and your quality of life. So it's a little bit of a catch-22. You know, being active makes you breathless. However, being active in the long run makes you less breathless. So that's what we like to talk to you today about ways to be active at a level that is safe for you but is in turn going to make you fitter and is going to make you stronger so that you are getting less out of breath when you're doing activities such as shopping, climbing the stairs and housework. Okay and an example of what I've just spoke about on the previous slide is this vicious cycle of inactivity that we like to speak about. So give yourself an example of an activity that makes you feel breathless. I'll use walking as an example. So if we start at the top, you think about walking and it makes you feel breathless. What happens is you start to become fearful of that activity because it makes you feel breathless. So you think about that you need to go out for a walk, but you actually avoid it because it's bringing in a lot of anxiety and a lot of breathlessness you avoid it and in the short term it makes you feel a bit better because actually you've avoided an activity that makes you feel like you're in danger gives you a lot of anxiety and makes you breathless so you start to do less but in the long run what happens is your muscles become weaker and that actually does happen a lot quicker than you think it does your muscles start to shrink and you become a bit weaker and um, become more deconditioned as your fitness reduces we like to say that if you don't use it you'll lose it and this is very much the case in this scenario, okay? So you avoid going for a walk as much as you can because it makes you breathless. So it reduces your ability to be active. At the end of the day, as much as you want to avoid walking, you're going to eventually have to go outside for a walk. Whether it's to go to a hospital appointment, whether it's to visit friends and relatives, or just to get on with your activities of daily living, you are going to have to go back out and do that. But because you've avoided it for so long, when you are going back to that activity, you're actually more breathless than when you began. So it starts off, again, back at this cycle, you become more breathless, so you avoid it a lot more. And that is this cycle that we try and break with the BREATHE program by teaching you to be active at a level that is comfortable for you but also getting the functional benefits. 
Okay, so before I talk about what kind of level of intensity we should be working at, I'm first of all going to talk about the recommended activity levels for all adults in the UK, even anybody with a lung condition, a heart condition um, or a mobility condition. It should be about 150 minutes per week of moderate exercise we should be aiming for. And moderate exercise is anything that gets you breathless, and you feel like your muscles are working. So 150 minutes in the week, that's probably about 20 to 30 minutes, five days a week. And you think about anything that gets you moderately breathless. So that could be maybe like the housework, gardening, going for a food shop, um, going for a purposeful walk, maybe taking the dog for a walk is quite a good one um, that will get you out of breath and that will be hitting those ones. If possible as well, we do like to incorporate a little bit of strength training um, about twice a week. Now, some people like to do the traditional strength training by using resistance bands, dumbbells, even tin food or your own body weight. But if you think about carrying two big bags of heavy shopping, that also counts towards your strength training as well, okay? Okay, so on the previous slide, we spoke about how much we should be doing. 150 minutes per week of moderate physical exercise. In this slide, I'm going to be talking to you about what we mean by moderate, okay? So you can see on the right, we've got this rating of perceived breathlessness scale. Now, if you've come to the classes or you've had a walk test in person, you'll have seen us use this, but if not, no worries, I'll go through what it means. So zero at the top, nothing at all, is basically you can't feel your breathing at all it's not troubling you 10 at the bottom in red is when your breathlessness is so severe that you can't even get a word out your chest is very very tight um and if we were in the community i'll be honest it will be a little bit more of an emergency situation and it's when you'll consider calling an ambulance so it's the worst your breathing has ever been when we're exercising we obviously don't like to be at those levels. We like to be at a number three and moderate in the dark green because it's very normal to be out of breath when you are exercising, but you wanna be out of breath to a point where you control that breathing. If it gets to a point where you're starting to lose control of your breathlessness, starting to panic a little bit, you're probably going into the somewhat severe to severe stages in the amber. And that's what we like to try and avoid. Um, so aiming for a moderate level of breathlessness. If it does get to a point where you are creeping into a four, a five, somewhat severe, it's just a case of pacing yourself, having the appropriate rest breaks, whether that's walking on the street, doing a food shop or gardening, you know, just as those examples, have a little bit of a rest if you need to. But the aim of this slide is that a moderate level of breathlessness what we should be aiming for obviously we don't want to be in the nothing at all stage when we're exercising because it probably means that we're doing a little bit a little bit less not enough to get those functional changes we want to see with physical exercise okay so i'm going to delve a little bit deeper into what we mean by moderate level of uh, exercise and a good method tell if you're at a good level of physical activity is what we call the talk test. Now this is the idea that if you are at a moderate level of physical activity you should be able to hold a conversation whilst exercising even if it's just a very light conversation you're having with somebody and if you're struggling to do so then it probably means that you're working higher than a three so higher than a moderate level you know if you're struggling to form a couple of words in a sentence and you're really struggling to catch your breath just to get that out you're at a somewhat severe or a severe stage and that means that you need to just have a little bit of a sit down pace yourself and get your breath back even if it means just using that blue reliever inhaler as well if you are prescribed one now obviously if you can sing a song and if you can belt out your favorite karaoke tune it probably means that you're working a little bit too light you might more be in this very slight nothing at all stage and that probably means that you can work a little bit harder okay okay and that's why we call pulmonary rehabilitation and exercise in general this magic pill and the prescription is 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week now don't worry if you're not hitting that 
at the moment, that 150 minutes, you can treat it as more of a goal. You know, even if you're just getting in at the moment, maybe 90 minutes, 100 minutes, and you're struggling to get that extra 50 minutes, for example, you know, don't worry about it if you're not getting it straight away and don't feel demoralised. It is possible and you can achieve that goal, especially through the help of pulmonary rehabilitation, okay? So exercise through pulmonary rehabilitation is again associated with so many benefits and there is a massive reason that we do it. So we reduce the risk of an exacerbation and illness from chest infection and reduce the risk of you going into hospital. So that's why we have things like pulmonary rehabilitation in the NHS. We're trying to get you as fit and active as we possibly can so that we can keep you out of hospital. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to be in hospital and we don't want you to be in hospital either if we can help it. So that's why we have things that are there to get you more physically active through pulmonary rehabilitation. Okay. In addition to that, it also reduces your breathlessness at rest on exertion. We've spoke about a little bit of this catch-22 that being physically active makes you breathless, but in the long run, being physically active makes you less breathless through improved fitness and strength. And we've spoken about what kind of level you need to be at to see those functional changes, okay? It's this moderate level, this talk test that you can do, all right? And by doing that, it improves your performance in your activities of daily living, increases your strength and it also improves your mental health as well you know if you are somebody that is suffering from anxiety and depression there's so much research out there that suggests being more active controlling your condition rather than it controlling you reduces that anxiety and depression as well and leads to an overall improved quality of life okay so we've spoke about how much we should be doing per week but what kind of intensity and what the benefits are now we're just going to speak about the different types of physical activity so the first one i'm going to start with is aerobic exercise now you probably already do this every day without even realizing it but the definition of aerobic exercise is any activity that uses a large muscle group and is repetitive in nature. So walking is a really good example of that, You're using those big muscles on the legs and it's repetitive in the steps that you're taking. Um, and you should feel breathless while doing these activities. Now the next point says it should be performed in 10 minute bouts or more. But to be honest with you, even if you can just manage three or four minutes with a little bit of a rest, that is absolutely fine. Um, my advice would be do as much as you can, maybe see if you can build on what you can do, you know, if you can only manage three minutes of walking as you get fitter and stronger, maybe just manage 30 seconds more at a time and see if you can build up that 10 minutes potentially. Other examples, um, as well as walking, could be climbing the stairs, that's also an aerobic exercise, swimming, brisk walking, gardening as well. Swimming is a really popular the one that we get on pulmonary rehab. A lot of people might talk about that they used to go swimming, but they don't anymore with their diagnosis. But as long as you're sticking to a moderate level of intensity, you're pacing yourself, there's no reason why you know you couldn't get back to swimming. A lot of the time it's a confident sort of thing, okay? Um, but those are your examples of aerobic exercise. Okay, so we've spoken about aerobic exercises. The next topic I'm going to go on to is your strength exercises. So these are a little bit different because they are activities that fatigue the muscles quicker and are performed more in repetitions and sets. And they're to be performed twice weekly, okay? So you don't necessarily have to be somebody that goes to the gym and lifts weights to perform strength training because other examples could be lifting your shopping bags and lifting heavy objects whilst gardening that does also count towards your strength training as well okay you might have also have been prescribed exercises from us at pulmonary rehab with resistance bands and um, with small weights to perform those strength exercises as well um, and the reason why we prescribe more upper body strength exercises is because they're there to help the muscles in your chest get bigger and stronger. So you imagine how big your lungs are in your chest. And okay, so when performing 
an exercise session. We need a little bit of a structure for this. And we start off with a very light warm up, recommended about five or 10 minutes. Very light movement with a couple of stretches incorporated into it. Then moving on straight into our exercise session and then a very light cool down. Again, very light movement, more of an emphasis on the stretching side of it. And the idea is we do a very light warm up because we want our breathing rate and our heart rate to come up very, very slowly. And we want to stretch all the muscles that we're about to use for exercise so we don't injure them. And then it's very much the same with cool down. You don't want to suddenly stop exercising so that your heart rate and your breathing rate comes down very, very quickly. It can cause a little bit of dizziness, a little bit of nausea when that happens. And we also want to stretch off all the muscles that you've used during that session as well, okay? So make sure you're following this structured regime for each exercise session that you're doing a very light 5-10 minute warm-up, going into your exercise, and then you're doing 5 minutes very light fall down, okay? Okay, so if you're following a structured exercise regime, whether that's a strength programme that we've set, whether it's a walking programme that you're doing every day, it does get to a point where you are getting fitter, you are getting stronger, and those benefits plateau out a little bit. And at that point, that's when we should start to progress the exercises. And it can be difficult to know when you should start progressing your exercises. That is, whether it's doing a little bit more walking, lifting heavier weight or doing more of the same exercise more times per week. The idea is that when you no longer feel breathless during an activity and it starts to feel easier, it's time to progress the exercise. So we're aiming for this moderate level of breathlessness when you are exercising and if it gets to a point where you're doing that same exercise but actually your breathing is starting to feel pretty okay it's time to start increasing the amount that you're doing whether that's increasing the walking pace or the duration or the number of reps and sets that you're doing for an exercise and an exercise may feel easier when you're starting to score a zero to two in our rpb scale that we spoke about in the previous slides so that would be that your breathing feels like it's nothing at all very slight or slight and when we're exercising, as I mentioned, we need to be working at this moderate level of intensity and this moderate level of breathlessness because we need to gain the benefits of exercise. If we're at a zero to two, we're not going to be gaining as much unless we're at a three. OK, now, obviously, if exercise starts to feel somewhat severe, you know, maybe if you've done a little bit too much or you've pushed it a little bit too far, it just needs to be reduced a little bit as we don't want to make your condition worse by exercising at an extreme level. Now, it can be hard to know when to progress an exercise. So my advice would be that if you are exercising at home, progress your exercises in very little bouts, okay? You know, just add in a little bit at a time so that you know how much you can handle. It can be a little bit scary when you are adding bits onto your exercises, but ultimately it is going to make you fitter and it is going to make you stronger. So just going into what we've just spoke about, into a little bit more depth. If you're at a naught to one or two, it's time to progress the exercises. So that would be if you're doing an exercise and your breathing feels nothing at all, very, very slight or very slight, okay? If you're at a point where your breathing's feeling pretty moderate, that would be the ideal levels of exercise. And it's, it's good to just keep your exercise regime the same when you're at that level. And maybe even think to start pushing it when it starts to creep down, okay? However, if your exercises are starting to make you feel somewhat severe with your breathlessness or severely breathless, that would be a time to just reduce the exercises a little bit, okay? And as you get fitter and stronger, you'll be able to build yourself back up for those exercises. Okay, and it's important to understand with exercise that it is a commitment no matter what you do. The benefits that you see with exercise, unfortunately, they do not happen overnight with one session. That's why committing to at least eight weeks of formal rehabilitation and engaging with the exercises that we prescribe you is absolutely vital to see these benefits or at least start to see these benefits within eight weeks because the idea is that we teach you how to exercise within those eight weeks 
and then after we discharge you we need you to carry on those exercises on your own at home because unfortunately if we exercise for eight weeks and then we do nothing at all we'll lose all those benefits and all those gains we've got whilst you've been on the program okay having a structured exercise and an active lifestyle is shown to have benefits and increase the strength of the user after four weeks significantly but again that's all about commitment and all about how much you engage with the process so my advice would be that you need to do something you enjoy to stick to that commitment it's no good doing something that you don't enjoy so for example if i was to give you a walking program but you absolutely hate walking it's going to be difficult to stick to that but if you love swimming and i prescribe you a swimming program you're more likely to stick to that because it's something that you enjoy and that's why exercise should always be tailored to you as the individual and any other factors that impact your ability to exercise so for example if you have any ongoing mobility issues any arthritis or any ongoing injuries the exercises should always be tailored to you so that when you come to do the exercises you're getting enjoyment out of it and you're not feel like you're being um, held back by anything that you are doing okay that's why it's really important to understand that it is a commitment and it is a lifestyle change that you are committing to as well okay so motivating yourself to exercise can be really hard and maintaining that motivation is even harder which is why we use the five whys of motivation whereby you're continuously asking yourself why you want to be physically active to enable that behavior change okay so just following on from that last slide we have an example conversation of why using the five whys of motivation to find the root cause of being physically active is important to you so essentially the conversation starts off by stating that the individual is exercising because it's part of their treatment which to be honest isn't the best for long-term motivation for exercise however as the whys keep being asked the patient ends the conversation by stating they want to manage their breathlessness due to a fear of missing out and playing with the grandkids so this becomes a more personal reason to exercise and because it's more personal it's a more stronger motivator for exercise you know so basically you're more likely to exercise get fitter get stronger manage your condition better if you have a more personal goal in mind so for example that could be playing with the grandkids it could be this fear of missing out you want to go outside you know you're more likely to exercise when you've got those goals in mind rather than exercising just because um, staff members you know have told you to do so so it's about finding that root cause of why being physically active is important to you and sticking to that. Okay, so just following on from that last slide and going into motivation a bit deeper, we have the tree on our screen that represents motivation with the leaves and branches being the surface level of seeing someone exercise so for example that could be seeing somebody going for a walk maybe even going for a run um, just as you're going about your day that's the surface level we see of anybody exercising however the roots below the surface represent the core value and reasons why we may exercise and the things that motivate us so we have the example of being fit enough to play with the grandkids and being physically fit to live long enough to see your grandchildren children grow up but there's also motivational factors on there such as going out with friends and completing activities as you did before sometimes there's this fear of missing out as well and these are the root causes of motivation and it's really important to find your root cause by asking yourself the five whys of motivation okay so why am i here why am i exercising you know why am i coming to the program you know and find your root cause of motivation and use it when you're exercising because we all have days where we really can't be bothered to exercise it is very normal but when this happens it's about using your root core and your value to motivate yourself so for example you know you might think oh do you know what i don't want to exercise today i can't be bothered but actually if i don't i won't be able to go on holiday with my family due to my breathlessness and i'll miss out on those happy memories so actually i'm going to at least make an attempt today to be physically active so it's just about finding your motivation to exercise okay
Okay, so this next slide is just a little bit of information about keeping safe whilst exercising. So we always say do not exercise if you have an active chest infection or on antibiotics. So if you've been given antibiotics or steroids by the GP, you're taking them and your symptoms are going away, you're starting to feel a little bit better. We still say don't exercise until you've finished that full course of antibiotics, okay? And always make sure that if you're prescribed a blue inhaler, you've got that with you whilst you're exercising not that we expect you'll need it necessarily everybody's different but just have it as a little bit of a safety precaution okay and also if you prescribed a gtn spray for your heart make sure you have that with you if you don't know what a gtn spray is don't worry about it if you are exercising stop if you get any sudden chest pains especially any pains that go into your left arm or your jaw you start feeling increasingly dizzy and wheezy and it could also be worth taking advice or seeking out advice from a healthcare professional such as your GP 111 or in an emergency call in 999. Okay, so this next slide is about exercising whilst on oxygen. If you don't have an oxygen prescription, don't worry about this slide. A lot of people with a chronic lung disease do not need oxygen therapy when sitting or walking for very short distances. However, some people do, depending on your situation. And if you have an oxygen prescription, it'll have been prescribed due to low oxygen in the blood, sometimes something that we call oxygen saturations. And depending on your situation, you may have different types of oxygen therapy. You may have something called long-term oxygen therapy where you need a continuous supply of oxygen for a number of hours throughout the day, even if you are at rest. You may also be on something called ambulatory oxygen. This is because the body needs more oxygen when you're active, so a person's oxygen level may drop when they exercise. These people benefit from using a supplementary type of oxygen when they exercise, and this kind of oxygen as I said, is called ambulatory oxygen therapy and it's intended for patients who have low oxygen levels when they're active and it's used for those individuals who would like to attend pulmonary rehabilitation and improve their exercise tolerance and it's used when undertaking outdoor activities. Now you may be on a combination of both long-term and ambulatory oxygen therapy whereby you're on a supply of oxygen even at rest but you just need a little bit more whilst you're exercising and whilst you're coming to pulmonary rehabilitation. And it's used especially when you're exercising because oxygen therapy is associated with significant improvements in health status. It's on, it, on its own, it can improve the quality of life and exercise tolerance of an individual. People with COPD and an interstitial lung disease are often but not always able to work or further when using ambulatory oxygen therapy. And even if you're prescribed oxygen, but you don't feel breathless when you exercise, it's still vital to wear oxygen whilst exercising as it can cause long-term damage to the lungs and the body due to this oxygen starvation, okay? So what happens after you've spent eight weeks at the Breathe programme? Now, keeping active after pulmonary rehabilitation is vital. You've done so much work during those eight weeks and you want to be able to maintain that. At the end of the day, the whole point of pulmonary rehabilitation is to teach you how to be active and to self-manage. And we need something after pulmonary rehabilitation to be able to continue that self-management. So one of the schemes that we can refer you to is something that we call Exercise for Health. Now, Exercise for Health is a 12-week programme which aims to encourage more people to be active and improve their health, their medical condition and their life expectancy. So how it works is we can fill in a lifestyle referral form for you. Uh, a member of staff can do that. Or alternatively, if you don't feel like it's the right time for you, you can always go to the GP and have a consultation with them. So we give you a referral form and you go to your chosen lifestyle centre. What happens is they have a little bit of an induction. It costs about £8.80 altogether for the induction, where a specialist instructor will issue yourself a membership card and they'll create like a 12 week fitness plan with you. They'll also show you around the gym, how to use the gym equipment and tell you which classes you may be suitable to take part in. And during those 12 weeks, you can use the gym for about £1.10 at your chosen centre during certain GP referral times. So you won't necessarily be in with the general public, you'll be in with people such as yourself. 
off and an instructor will be on hand for all sessions to support you during that as well. Now, if the gym isn't really for you, you can also swim with the Exercise for Health referral scheme. Uh, you can swim at any of the lifestyle pools during the public swim times and certain times for £1.10 uh, as well. So yeah, see if that suits you. Ask a member of the team if you'd like a referral form or alternatively, you can also go and see your GP about that. Another scheme that you can join is called Walking for Health, which organises walks around Liverpool, suitable for beginners and anybody with a chronic lung condition. And they organise walks very much in North Liverpool, and the weekly walks are held in a number of communities and utilise parks and green spaces within Anfield, Brettfield and Everton and the walks are there and designed to attract residents from diverse backgrounds and anybody with different health issues and problems and it's a very positive experience and focuses very much on health outcomes so as well as reducing any symptoms of your pulmonary conditions it can also reduce the risk of many diseases such as heart disease, osteoporosis, certain cancers, diabetes and strokes but it's also there to reduce any stress, anxiety and tension you might have. It helps regain fitness, certainly after illness or exacerbation. So if you find that you have a chest infection, you've just come out of hospital, this might be a really good scheme for you to join. It also helps people sleep better, control any body weight and increase general stamina and fitness levels. But it can also be a way to build relationships with other people and reduce isolation as it very much focuses on being a group activity. So if that's something you'd like to be referred to, give them a call or check out their website to see how you can get in touch. Okay, another fitness scheme that you can also get on board with is called Healthiness that provides exercise classes that target all abilities. So Healthiness is a not-for-profit health promotion company offering a variety of fitness classes and social opportunities throughout Liverpool, Darlington and online. And they include specialist 50 plus exercises, fun fitness, chair based exercises, aerobics, they also do walking groups, cycling groups, they do things like couch to 5k, bingo, arthritis rehabilitation, they have escape pain classes as well um, and they've got all sorts for anybody of all different abilities, exercise tolerances and health conditions and it very much promotes um, fitness and friendly exercise classes and social opportunities to take part in. So again if you're interested in them call the number or go onto the website to see how you can uh, join up to different classes. Okay, and the last online service available is called Livewire Liverpool Health Trainers and it's free advice you can get from trained instructors to offer one-to-one -one support, guidance and motivation to individuals who want to make a change to their lifestyle. So whether that's taking up um, physical activity, quitting smoking, losing weight, trained instructors are there on hand to be able to offer advice and support to you. It is mainly online and over the phone, so again just check out their website or give them a call. Okay, that's everything from me today on this talk on exercise and a chronic respiratory disease. Hope you've enjoyed all the information. If you want any further support, please visit thebreatheprogram.co.uk.